All right, how's it going everyone? My name is Theron and welcome back to another Fire Emblem Hero summoning session. Today we have probably the most surprising banner we're ever going to get for a while. A double mythic featuring Formortis from Sacred Stones, Big Bad, and Goto from New Mystery slash Shadow Dragon. I... <laughs> firstly, what the heck? Because... If I recall correctly, it has been only two months since our last, like, double legendary, double mythic, whatever combo banner between Veronica and Embla. That was back in November. It has only been two months since we got that banner, and they're already giving us another double mythic banner. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's one heck of a way to start off uh, 2023. Let's go. Not only that, it's, like I said, freaking the Mortis. The Big Bad Sacred Stones. It, I honestly was not expecting him to be a mythic. Well, okay. That, that's actually a lie. I was expecting him to be a mythic. But I wasn't expecting him to be a mythic alongside alongside Goto. Is the thing. But either way, these two are just... These two are just absolute powerhouses that are definitely going to be changing how people want to play this game, especially in PvP, PvE matches, since, yeah, both of them are kind of overpowered, and you can just smell the power creep off of both of these two. For example, for Mortis, his weapon Ravager, I would try reading all of this, but the TLDR, if you just want to know that real quick, it's basically Better Fallen Edelgard. And I'm not just talking about, like, Better Fallen Edelgard's weapon, it's just Better Fallen Edelgard, period. It, that's all it is. If you just give him healing, he's basically Fallen Edelgard 2.0, Electric Buka. He, he's just one absolute powerhouse. And of course we have his A skill, Nightmare, which... Yeah, that that's gonna be a struggle to go up against. We have a if foe initiates combat or has 75% or more HP, they are inflicted with attack defense minus 10 during combat. Oh god. And a 30% damage reduction on foe's first attack. And then of course, if foe initiates combat, at the end of that combat, it will end the turn of any allies of the foe. That are within four spaces that have yet to move. So you effectively get a. Let's wait to start this. Oh, that's right. This is his. That's right. This is his special, like, quote unquote, sleep stave that he has in Sacred Stones. That's basically what the uh, ends the turn's closest foes within four spaces means. It's just like putting them to sleep in a way, or how Faye is going to interpret it. Interpret it. Oh. That is scary. That's a brave Ike. Well, we'll get to you later. But that ending the turns of any foes that have yet to move is scary, especially for the game mode summoner duels, because I mean, you're basically going one at a time. If you attack Famortis in that game mode, you're your entire turn is just done at that point. Like, I don't I don't really care about summoner duels all that much. I almost never play it anymore. But I can just tell if Mortis is going to negatively affect summoner duels for the worst. And if you play summoner duels, I am very sorry that you're going to have to be dealing with this guy for a long time. I will say the the only good thing, or I guess the weird thing about Fomortis is his entire his entire sprite, the little beast sprite you can see on screen, they somehow got all of that to fit in the tiny little square on a map. One of those tiny little tiles on the map. They somehow got that entire unit to fit on screen. How? I have no idea. 
but they definitely did an amazing job with that part. Hey, yeah, Silk. And of course, the other thing I'll say about Fumortis, Daisuke Izuka, the artist, they did an amazing job with, uh, with his art. That is 10 out of 10 amazing. You can just see how imposing he is. Then the, the other guy who's, again, also probably going to be changing the meta, we have Goto, the White Sage. Uh, his weapon, Brilliant Starlight, uh, let's see, here we go. So we have Slain Effect, and then at start of turn, if unit's HP is 25% or greater, grants plus 6 defense and res, and reduces AoE specials damage by 80% to both unit and allies within two spaces. So already pretty good support up there. And then, if unit's HP is 25% or more, inflicts attack res minus 6 on foe, neutralize bonuses on foe's attack and res, so essentially both of those combined is like full attack res, a null counter disrupt, and then restores 7 HP to Goto. So no matter what, it, Dazzling Staff is not going to work on this guy, nor will Fire Sweep weapons. Now that doesn't sound that doesn't sound too scary, but people are basically calling Goto the better Brave Ike, or at least the magical Brave Ike, because of his A skill, Gift of Magic. If you initiates combat or foe is ranged, looks attack res minus ten on foe. They really like debuffing our they really like debuffing our stats by ten nowadays. I'm noticing. Also, unit makes a guaranteed follow follow up attack and reduces damage from foe's second attack onward by 80%. That right there is the Brave Ike part of the part of this kit, but of course at ranged. And finally, if foe is ranged and you initiates com or sorry, if foe is ranged and initiates combat, Goto basically has no follow-up, thanks to his A skill. Oh my god. That's what we mean by he's basically Brave Ike, but magic. He reduces so much of your attack that he's basically unaffected by it, and then he nukes you on the follow. Insanity. A true insanity. Granted, I kind of expected nothing less for... Essentially the savior unit for most Shadow Dragon and New Mystery runs. But this is just from what I've heard. I, again, haven't played the games. Hi, hey, Elif. We'll get we'll get to you in a second. I haven't played his games, but from what I hear, he's basically like the savior unit in case you screw up your run so bad that you only have like Marth and maybe a handful of units that can do minimal damage. Goto's basically supposed to come in, save you, and sweep maps. At least from what I've heard. All in all, this banner is actually pretty dang good. Obviously you have the powerhouse of Colorless being our two focus units, and Arvel, who is an amazing mage unit. It definitely one of the best, highly recommend if you're pulling on this banner, pull every colorless stone you can. You will get somebody good. Every single time. It may be. But we also have the return, as we just saw on the previous screen, Rearmed Leaf. But we already know that they're at least guaranteed on Legendary Myth Banners for Rearmed Worlds. At least can guarantee them soon? I think maybe... I think it's February's Legendary Banner, we could possibly see Rearmed Rima return, since she's the next one. Excuse me. But hopefully we do get, like, some sort of special banner for the rearmed heroes, because they are still very rare to get. 
and their version of like skill inheritance where you don't lose them, but you can get their essentially a PR, PRF refinable weapon. That is good. That is something everybody wants. So I highly, highly suggest pulling on this banner if you really still need some rearm leaves. Or if you didn't get them yet. But also you have legendary Veronica in red who is also a very, very good unit. She's, again, she was released two months ago and she still holds strong. And of course, green and blue. Eh, green's probably the weakest. It's only being carried by Ascended Hilda, and that's about it. Freya and Edelgard are starting to get so old they really need a remix. Okay, still getting, still getting one colorless. That, that's at least good. That's one chance for somebody decent. Actually, not decent. Somebody powerful. I gotta remember that all three of the people on colorless are just powerhouses. Oh my god. say for this banner, or at least the trailer, uh, I talked about this with my friend Satachi during our reaction collab, uh, I'm very surprised that this didn't follow the like, pattern we saw with Three Houses when they were getting their first banners. How it was a debut banner for just, you know, some starting characters, game came out, and then we got the Mythic Sothis banner. That's the order of things that happened. So I'm a little surprised we didn't see somebody like the Fell Dragon Sombron from that game. Or another character people were saying could be a mythic was Bale. It's hard to describe what she looks like because everybody is a little weird. But they were saying it could have been either Bale or Sombron as like this month's mythic. But nope, blindsided by these two units, which I'll still take. Plus, at the very least, it doesn't spoil much from the game. We're not getting, you know, absolutely punched in the face with spoilers, which is a good thing in my opinion. But definitely, definitely look forward to an engaged mythic banner with either Sombron or, if theory holds true, Bale. I still haven't gotten to that part, if that is true, of her story, but... Uh, when I do, she's definitely going to be a mythic hero contender, that's for sure. Speaking of Engage, I am very I am very much enjoying it, and I am glad that I went back. <laughs> I know I said this a few times before on some live streams, but I am very glad that I went back and replayed the first five chapters on hard mode, so I could play the rest of the game on hard mode, because that has been giving me such a challenge, and I like it. I really like it. So from, from the... Wednesday's stream, where we left off on Chapter 11, from what I at least interpreted from uh, chat's reactions to that, basically saying, here we go, and good luck, I can only interfere, inter interpret, I mean, uh, that, ooh, hey Arvo, I can only interpret that Chapter 11 is going to be either a nightmare or a challenge that I am 
going to absolutely love. Either way, I am very much looking forward to this. And that should actually, that'll actually be later on today at normal stream time. So I think, yeah, I think depending on when this goes up, I will either... Okay, hi, Leaf. Was not expecting you to also show up in this circle. Hi. All right, then. I will still take it. <laughs> anyway, uh, today's engaged stream, it should be... I think probably by the time this goes up, I'll still have a few more hours, a few more minutes at least, before the stream starts, but depending on when you're watching this, I will already be streaming or will have probably ended the stream. But either way, if you are watching this before the stream starts, hope to see you there. Because again, from what I hear, Chapter 11 is going to be something. I have no idea what that something is, but it's going to be something. The wrap to finish it off. All right. Who do I want to be my spark bubble? Uh, you know what? I'll follow my uh, priority list on the left. I'll check. I'll grab Goto. I'm not going to be too toxic and take Fomortis because, oh my god, he has something. I'll take Goto. It. That and that. Sweet. So that is going to do it for today's summon session. Pretty dang good. Like I said, this banner is just full of really powerful units. You have the entirety of Colorless. We find we finally have the Return of Rearmed Relief alongside Legendary Veronica, both of which are really good. So again, highly recommend if you're pulling on this banner. Red and colorless should be your top priority. They're just they're just the two best. That was that was actually pretty lucky. You got only two four-star specials. And an Orville and Yeah, an Orville right at the end. That was actually pretty dang good. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have someone on Spanner, let me know who you got down below in the comment section. I always love seeing your results. And if you haven't summed yet, again, highly recommend it. But I wish you all the luck in the world. So with that, I'm Theron, and I'll see you next time. But until then, farewell, and game on.